Hi there, it's Mr. Wedge, and today we're going to make a sculpture that's abstract in the style of Jean Dubuffet. So I've got something to draw with, doesn't matter what. I've got some tape, doesn't matter what kind of tape. Um, I've got scissors, I've got light cardboard that I can cut. You need to be able to cut this with scissors kind of easily. And then I've got strips of paper, and this is a little bit thicker paper, so it's kind of strong. And it doesn't matter how long the paper is, but they all need to be the same width. And you'll see why in a little bit. Then I've got some white glue. So I'm going to get started by drawing out a rectangle about the size of my hand. And then we're going to cut some organic shapes out. I'm going to trace them first. You do need to remember where the bottom is and keep that kind of flat. You need at least two flat parts. But it's okay to have some shapes coming out because these will be the feet. It needs to have two flat parts that line up so it can stand up. But then aside from that, it's up to you what you add or draw. So I'm going to remove some things here. And I can even cut some holes out. This is called piercing. If you have a, a hole in a sculpture, it's, it's pierced. So there we go. I've just got some rounded, curvy places where I'm going to cut this out. So my sculpture will be this solid area in here. So now I can start cutting it out. And just like I, when I started drawing, I started with the rectangle. So I'll do that too. And it's okay if your cardboard bends, you can flatten it out again later. Once you cut out your rectangle, it's going to be easier to cut these other shapes out. And I always say turn the, turn the paper or the cardboard when you're cutting, not your scissors. Just keep those straight. And you can fix it as you go. That wasn't quite round enough for me, so when I cut it, I kind of rounded it a little bit more. We're going to cover all the Sharpie, so nobody's going to see the drawing. When you get to a place in your sculpture that you want to be pierced and it's got a hole all the way through, it's easier to do this on some carpet. It's all cut out. I don't need my scraps, I can throw those away. I just need this organic shape that I have. So then I can go back to my same cardboard, line it up, and I'm going to trace this whole thing, all the shapes. And then I can cut this out and I'll have an exact copy of this shape. So I've got the same design twice, and now I can start making my posts that are going to go inside. It's almost like a sandwich. They're going to be on top of each other like this. So inside, to hold it up, we're going to make some cylinders. So I'm going to set those aside, take my strips of paper, roll them up. It doesn't really matter how thick this roll is. Um, you just want the top and bottoms to be flat. So make sure you kind of flatten them out on a flat surface, just so they're nice and even. And then a little piece of tape to hold it. So that's a little post. I'm going to make a few of those. Five or six is good. Once you have a few posts made, you can come back to your sculpture, figure out where you want the post to be. Definitely in any place that's like that, almost like an island or something. Those all need them. And then right in the middle for support, it's going to need those too. So this is just to hold up the other side of the sculpture, make the whole thing thick. So I'm just going to put a little few circles wherever I think the post should be. And then I just like to kind of take the end, move it around a little bit, and then just leave it so it's flat. Once your posts are glued on, you can take your other side of your sculpture, figure out how it lines up, and then flip it over because we're going to put glue on this side. And same thing, just kind of generally figure out where those posts are just by looking at the other side. You're going to have to kind of flip it in your head to figure out where they go. But just get a, a general idea. 
you mess up, it's okay. Nobody's gonna see this. This is the inside of the sculpture. Sort of like the guts or the skeleton of the sculpture. So it's all gonna get covered up later. And then we'll flip it over, line it up as best you can. So look straight down on it, get it all lined up. You can press down a little bit if you're careful. Not too hard. And then we're just gonna set this somewhere flat to dry for a little bit. So once your glue is dry, you've got a sculpture that stands up and it's pretty strong. So now the next part's gonna be a little messy. We've got some water and we're gonna have to get our glue out. And I've got a brush to stir it up with, but you can stir it up with anything. We're gonna mix water and glue together and do some paper mache. And for the next part, I'm gonna use white paper, but it's a little bit thinner. So this is just computer paper. It's not as thick as the paper we used to roll up the posts that we made. And then I'm going to just start shredding the paper into little pieces. So it's nice to have some shorter ones and some longer ones. But just make like a little collection. Normally we turn the orange part of the glue to open it, but this time we're just going to take the whole cap off. So turn the white part. I'm going to pour all the glue into any kind of container that it's okay to get glue in. Um, something you could wash out, but don't use something you're going to eat out of. And just pour the whole bottle of glue in. And you want about the same amount of water that you have glue, so 50-50. Then we can mix it all up. Once your glue and water mixture is all mixed, we'll take our sculpture. I like to start with longer pieces for this. Just dunk them in. Make sure you get both sides so everything's wet. Take two fingers, just like they're scissors, and you just want to pull down, and that'll get most of it off. And then you're just going to stick it on, wrap it around. We're going to cover our entire sculpture, but we still want to be able to see the form. So if you've got a cutaway part, you want to kind of tuck that under. Make sure it's nice and flat. So if you have holes, you're going to want to cover up inside the hole too. So kind of make a wall that goes all the way across or like a little bridge in there, if that makes sense. And you can do it from different angles. So this one I wrapped over the top of it. But now I'm going to do one over that goes starts here and goes through and over just so I can cover up that space. So the goal is to get it all closed up so that you don't see the inside of your sculpture anymore um, so that you still have your, your cutout shapes in your holes. So it can be kind of tricky, but you can rip the paper to make it fit however you want. It's very messy, so you want to make sure you work on a place that you can get glue and water on. And it looks like I've got a little hole right in there, so I'm going to try to fill that in. Once your sculpture is all closed up all the way around and you can see the form really well, you can just put it on another piece of paper to dry flat. Make sure it's you know, feet side down so it's standing up the way you want it and then we'll just clean up our mess. Okay, so I've got a brush and some black paint. Now I can get my sculpture back and it's all dry. Just peel the paper off. There's my sculpture, it still stands up. And now I can paint the edges black. So anything, any corner, any edge or corner, we're gonna just paint all those black. And a good way to do it is just to load up your brush. If it's a, a point brush with the long bristles on it, you can just kind of hold it at an angle, and just run it along the side like that. So go through and anywhere you see an edge, you're just gonna paint all those edges.
So now I can go through and add some more lines and kind of continue these organic shapes that I have. But I'm going to paint right inside this time. So I'm going to use the tip of my brush. So I'm going to load up my brush and I'm just going to kind of pull and turn and that'll make the brush pointy on the end. And then I can just draw with it. And then one more thing you can do is just pick a few and add stripes. So here's a pattern. Just makes it more interesting. So there's a way you could make a sculpture in the style of Jean Dubuffet, and I hope you enjoy making yours. Work hard and have fun.